I bring you greetings. We must learn to prioritize our common interests above the superficial differences in color, tribe, gender, religion, and political affiliations. Human conflicts remain a major trigger in precipitating the phenomenon of refugees and internationally and internally displaced people. According to the UNHCR, over 114 million people have been forcefully uprooted from their native lands on account of armed conflicts. This translates into dire humanitarian crises such as famine, outbreaks of uh, communicable diseases. Addressing you from the standpoint of Uganda's uh, unique experience in grappling with these challenges of refugees and internally displaced people, I wish to inform you that in 1986, when the NRM government came to power, 500 southern Ugandans had fled to Sudan and Zaire, now Democratic Republic of Congo. They had run away for fear of uh, reprisals from the then army. They were said to be Amini's sympathizers. They all came from West Nile, Amini's home place. Uganda was number four in the export of refugees after Afghanistan, Cambodia, and Ethiopia. As you all know, Uganda has become a signing example of what is possible when we prioritize humanity over fear, compassion, over division, and solidarity over indifference. One may therefore ask, how did Uganda move from being the fourth world exporter of refugees to now the fourth in the world as a refugee hosting country and the first in Africa? How did the last become the first? The lesson from Uganda's experience is that the solution to the refugee problem is democracy and creating stable living conditions in every country. Establishing conditions of security, peace, and democracy is a chore to the global refugee crisis. Only this can remove the phenomenon of refugees. Our ideology of emphasizing interests, of interests instead ident of identity, of religion, tribes, enabled our people to know what is primary and what is periphery. When the NRM took over power in Uganda, we went out and persuaded all Ugandans in exile to return home and even helped them to settle down. We had to do this. It was not a privilege. We were extending to them. We were obliged to bring them home and remove their fears. Therefore, we should stabilize political conditions in most of our countries so that there is no need for anybody to be a refugee on account of politics. Poverty and natural disasters also create desperate conditions that force people to free their homelands. Uganda is currently a host of 1.6 million refugees, majority of whom are from South Sudan, that, that is 917, 280 people. Democratic Republic of, of Congo, 505,075. Somalia, 51,721. Burundi, 
42,207. Eritrea, 40,123, among others. As you may observe, these are our African brothers and sisters who find themselves victim of sectarian conflicts occasioned by the ideological disorientation of some groups relying on indisciplined and criminal enemies or militias. Accepting African refugees is a part of the solidarity with our African brothers and sisters. However, it is also a component of our Pan-Africanist strategy to work for the unity of Africa in order to ensure our prosperity and the prosperity of our African brothers and sisters. Therefore, Uganda caring for the African refugees that are brought here by adversity is not just charity. It is it is also a strategy. Uganda's open door policy is not merely a policy. It is a reflection of our people's unwavering commitment to the principle of Ubuntu, or humanity. I, however, wish to point out that in our willingness to host refugees, we face resource constraints when it comes to looking after their welfare within our borders. Enormous strain has been placed on our meager economic resources. The refugees come with understandable human needs for feeding, clothing, shelter, clean water, and water for production, education, and skills. These are critical needs that must be addressed by all the concerned stakeholders. They should not be left to the host countries. Therefore, we call upon all partners to join hands in upholding the human rights refugees. We need comprehensive and coordinated efforts that prioritize humanity above politics, that value compassion over indifference. It is also crucial that we prioritize programs geared towards empowering the refugees to be self-reliant. We must also help them to return to their home, uh, to return uh, their time in exile into an advantage by learning a skill that can transform them into productive members of society. Therefore, Uganda has prioritized these five pledges that we believe will, tr will be tr transformative in our refugee response. One, increased resilience and self-reliance. Two, addressing environment, climate change, and energy. Three, localizing the refugee response. Four, securing durable solutions for refugees. And number five, ensuring a coordinated and phased transition planning and management of developments with our partners. As we strive to create self-reliance in the area of agriculture, however, we should avoid creating conflict with indigenous people of Uganda over the diminishing land. Therefore, the refugees can only use the small plots of land in the refugee settlements around their houses to grow small quantities of seasonal crops and vegetables, preferably using irrigation. Refugees do not own land, so they cannot engage in growing perennial 
crops such as coffee because those would give a durability that would provoke the locals into hostility. We encourage local production and purchases from Uganda. Local purchases of food are more budget friendly than previous practices of importing such supplies from out. Still on self-reliance, the imparting of knowledge and skills, that is to say schools and university education and skills training is crucial. Education and skills can be availed to the refugees without conflicting so much with the locals as rural agriculture would do. Yes, you need more teachers in schools and technical colleges, which means more budget resources that create more pressures. But it is not as conflict-ridden as the rural land for agriculture. On the side of damaging the environment, the international community should work with us to enable the refugees use solar power, biogas from sources that can be uh, reared in such a squeezed area. Grid electricity may be too expensive, but other forms of energy clean ones, moreover, are the right solution. The international community should help. Our on localizing the refugee response, it is clear enough and will be done, but preferably with consultations with the local people. Regarding durable solutions for refugees, the durable solution for them is to go back to their countries of origin. We normally discuss this with countries of origin, together with the international community, to enable voluntary returns. Yes, we have. Lastly, it is crucial, especially on the African continent, that we accelerate the processes of political and economic integration. Most of the new and the old conflicts that continue to exacerbate uh, the refugee crisis are occasioned by opportunists and parasites exploiting weaknesses in governance. These weaknesses can be wiped out once we form a strong supranational government which is able to counter all threats against sovereignty and economic interests. Therefore, I appeal to my African brothers and sisters to take full responsibility for their situations by constructing a powerful political unit capable of eliminating cracks of weaknesses. It should not be fashionable <coughs> for Africa to be a theater of humanitarian crisis. One after another. We have a potent chore to the misery and suffering of our people. Additionally, economic integration is the answer to the aspirations for greater wealth and prosperity. The Americans, Asians, and Europeans have effectively utilized the principle of unity despite the great disparities which exist among them to build powerful economic and political entities. Our chief interest should be to secure the survival and the prosperity of our children and their children. There is no better guarantee for their future than working towards the political and economic integration of Africa. It ensures our strategic security and prosperity, the latter through integration of markets. It is disturbing to observe a proud and ancient group of people, the Africans, 
maintain a status of helplessness and surviving on the whims and the mercy of other people in the form of charity and aid. Therefore, let us resolve to strengthen our political and economic posture through integration. This will eliminate the senseless uh, cycle of conflicts which churn out refugees on our continent. I thank you. Now, these are our African brothers and sisters who find themselves victim of sectarian conflicts, occasioned by the ideological disorientation of some groups relying on indisciplined and criminal enemies or militias, their fears. Therefore, we should stabilize political conditions in most of our countries and vegetables, preferably using irrigation. Refugees do not own land, so they cannot in that is to say schools and university education and schemes training be too expensive, but other forms of energy clean ones. Moreover, uh, returns? Yes, we have. Lastly, it is crucial to not be fashionable for Africa to be a theater of humanitarian crisis. Economic integration is the answer to the aspirations for greater wealth and prosperity. The Americans, 